systems seizing, trapping, and locking principles. We want to talk about the difference between seizing, trapping, and locking, and how we define those within Kodak Life Protection Systems. Maybe different in other group, other systems, but how we define them when we're teaching techniques. The first one we would call seizing, and that is if a person has grabbed my shirt or something like this, if my hand comes up to grab them and pull them in tight to me, no matter what this other hand is doing, this is seizing them. It's, it's grabbing hold of them pulling them into me, I may, I may trap here or bring them in here. This, this hand that's grabbing and pulling, this is we call this seizing. It might be seizing the weapon, seizing the hand, seizing the arm, but that's what we're doing with this hand. Now the next is what we call trapping. Trapping is when, like if his hands are up, if I, if I use his arm against his body, I'm pushing it into him, or if he throws that other hand, and I use one arm against the other, and I get his hands to do this, or do this, or do this, we call that trapping. He's not locked up. All he has to do is move his arms to get out. If he, if he moves, pulls his right arm out, he can get out. He's out. But for a split second, if his hands are here, he's trapped, giving me time to strike. So we call that the trapping. Seizing, trapping, and then, of course, locking. Now, locking is when I actually immobilize a joint, such as his elbow. I'm going to just grab his wrist like this. His elbow is a hinge joint, bends this this way. If I go against the hinge joint and I rotate my arm this way, I can lock that arm. Now, it's a temporary lock in this sense because he may be able to move lower than the lock, uh, lower than the axis of the fulcrum and get out of it. But at least for a moment, I've immobilized that joint. Uh, a more specific, powerful lock may be something like a hammer lock. Uh, trade places with me, please. If he's pushing me with this arm and I rotate his arm here and I grab a hold of this muscle in his, in his uh, shoulder and I lock here, that's a good strong lock. I've immobilized his shoulder, his elbow, and his, and his arm. So we call that locking. So what I want to show today is how we use all three of these things together. Seizing, trapping, and locking all together in our techniques for personal defense and personal protection. So we're going to start, and I'll try places with you again. We're going to start with what we call brush, grab, strike. Sometimes it's called block, check, and counter. But we say brush, grab, strike uh, because as he goes, we're going to start from a push. If he's pushing me here, uh, sometimes people practice this from a jab. And if he does a jab, just jab, just slowly. Jab and pull back quickly. Go ahead. Grabbing a jab is very hard to do. If he's, if he's jabbing... Grabbing that is a little bit more difficult to do. But if he's, if he's committed to pushing me, grabbing that is a little easier and more likely. So when we talk about brush, grab, strike, he pushes. I, I brush this off of me. I'm moving my shoulders, and I grab a hold of this. Now I can return. Notice this is seizing this. So as I seize his arm and pull him towards me, I now move forward with what we call a back fist. Now, in our system, Code 8 Life Protection Systems, we do it a little differently because we don't necessarily use the fist. We can if we need the distance, but our goal is actually to be closer and use the back two bones of our forearm. So as he goes to push, I'm here, I trap this, seize this rather, and I move in. Notice my right foot and right arm work together as I lunge and I strike into the side of his neck where the brachial nerve, the vagus nerve, the nerve and the jugular vein are all right here, very easily uh, creating a response from him because it's going to hurt, it's going to possibly fuzz him up, may even knock him out. So as he's coming in to push, one, two, three, we call that brush, grab, and strike. Notice also when I do this back fist technique, Again, the foot position is very important. If my left foot's forward and I try to do a back fist, well, I'm, I'm all kind of incorrect with the way my body mechanics are because I'm not getting the proper hip rotation on this back fist. I need to have this hand forward. So if he starts and my left foot's forward, go ahead and push, brush, grab, I step as I do this technique. But if my right foot is forward, I lunge. I don't have to step. And the difference between that, a step is when one foot goes in front of the other, 
A lunge is when one foot steps out using the rear foot to push off. So it depends on if my left foot's forward, he pushes, I step into my technique. If my right foot's forward, I lunge into my technique. And that's my block check and counter here. Now, let's just say, for instance, him being a good, smart fighter, he goes to push me, I block, check, and counter, and he puts his hand in the way. Now comes my opportunity for a trap, because I'm going to take my elbow, slam down. Now both arms are trapped, and this hand can come up and strike. So now I've used my, both of my arms, but I'm no longer seizing. Now I'm trapping. So again, he pushes, block, check, counter. This hand's in the way. I slam these hands down, and this hand comes out, and it strikes. Just like this. Or, if this strikes and doesn't do the job, I retrap, and the other hand can come out like this. And without a partner, it looks very simple. If my hands are here, one, two, three, four, five. And it looks just like that. So that's just a little drill that I can do without a partner. Just rotating. There's the brush. Grab, strike. He, he blocked. So I come over the top. Here's back fist. Here's the second trap and a back fist. I can roll these techniques into each other. It's sort of like a kata for this technique. One, two, three, four, five. And there is my using the seizing and the trapping together. Now, I'm going to move up to a different using the locking, bringing the locking in. So let's say he pushes, block, blush, grab, strike, here. I'm here, he uses his other hand to stop me. So I can come here and trap, come over the top, back fist. I've got this hand seized now, I pull out, and there's my arm bar. I pulled him down into an arm bar. So relatively uh, smoothly, he comes in, one, two, three, four, five, six. And if he goes to rotate that, I can rotate back into a different lock or continue the arm bar depending on what I want to do. So this is how we would drill these techniques in class. We would move forward, we'd have him push, step off line here, if that hand comes up, elbow over the top, back fist, and there's my arm bar. So there's just a simple way of putting together seizing, trapping, and locking. Now, there's one other technique that I want to show that kind of goes together with these, and it's just another way to do the brush grab strike. This time, instead of a push to the chest, I want him to think about he's going to punch straight into my nose. At this time, I'm actually going to go to the outside. He's going to try to go through my head like he's really punching. So he's here, and I'm, again, brushing this out of the way. This hand, as he comes in, we call this brush trap strike because I'm not so much grabbing here. I'm going to trap this and drive into his head. And it's very relatively quick. As he comes in, I don't want to fight. And then I'm right inside here. Again, I don't want to fight, man. I don't want, to, I don't want any problems. And my hand comes in like that. It's a little different because if you notice on the brush grab strike push, I'm on the inside. On this technique, I'm on the outside. But they're using essentially the same body mechanics. My hands is working, the straight punch here. My hands are working in conjunction with the other. When one hand is trapping or blocking, the other hand is trapping, and then this hand is shooting. I'm not reaching way back to get my punches because I don't need to. I'm using proper body mechanics to throw my weight forward. So as he comes in, I'm stepping, moving in, and there's my strike, just like that. One, I want to talk about passive. Because let's say he's throwing a big hooking punch. I've got my hands, I don't want to fight. And he throws that hooking punch and it's wild. And notice my hands are already here. I didn't have to bring my hands up to block. In fact, this motion is an instinctual reactionary motion. So as he comes up, I don't want to fight. He's here. Now, I could stay in here and throw a knee, or I could stay in here and fight. But if I want to get to the outside, I need to move his arm through the motion that it's already going. And since he's throwing a powerful round punch, stopping that hurts. So what I want to do is I want to take this and bring it by 
And now I'm at the same position that I was with that last attack. Go back to the last one, your straight punch. See where I'm at here? I'm on the outside. I'm in a good range. I can hit him in the ear. I can hit him in the pressure points. I can hit him in the side of the neck. I can hit him in the face. I'm on a good position because I'm on the outside. Being on the inside, I leave myself open to that other hand. So when he throws his punch, if I want to be on the outside, I put myself on the outside and strike. Doing the same essential final technique. Straight punch. Hooking punch. And here, I'm in the same position I was when I finished the second technique as I did when I finished the first technique. I'm ending up on the outside of his arm, which is where I want to be. Because I want to be in a position where I have all of the advantage and his advantage is very limited. And that's what has happened. If he does a straight punch, I'm on the outside and I'm good. If he throws a hooking punch, and I'm on the outside and I'm in the same position, all the advantage. This is how we use seizing, trapping, and locking in the very basic levels of Kodiak Life Protection Systems.